Okay. And when um, each technique that you use is putting pressure on the different joints because you're not punching or striking anything, it's really easy because there's no effort for me. I'm not trying to struggle. I'm not trying to do anything. I just like being able to do stuff and then move around. And if you can see, obviously not enjoying it too much. But all it takes is just a simple, simple uh, shift in my body weight. I don't, I don't struggle with it, but we're in, so that's why it's called gentle way, because I'm not trying to force it, I try to go, it's not going to work, because right now, he's a, small, he's a small person, but if it was a bigger person, I can't do that, I can't do that, so that's why it's called gentle way, so when it comes to judo, judo is more throwing, now, personally, Mr. Huber here, he doesn't have any martial experience, so there's a lot of behind judo, it's not as simple as I'm going to chuck you and throw you, you need to know how to fall, what's called ukume. You need to know a proper technique because if I just throw you, there's a good possibility where you break something. I've seen matches where people have been thrown, they try to put their hand out to, to not, not be thrown, if the arm breaks right in half. So it's not pretty. That's why you have to, there's a lot, there's a lot that is involved with learning how to fall properly. So uh, in martial arts, you have a thing like I said called ukume, which is how to uh, roll properly. So it, it's simple to like this, where you roll forward and backwards, things called break fall. So when you fall, you fall properly without <coughs> damaging your head and making sure you're in a good position to get back up. Because if you just land and fall on your head, if someone just threw you, you're not going to be able to get up again. So that's a huge part of martial arts training. So some of the um, some of the throws you see in Ultraman, one of the most basic ones is called um, <coughs> it's called the shoulder shoulder five, which I'm just going to gently come up. Under, I pick him up, and I just gently fold. So you've seen, and when you're watching Ultraman, is they pick they pick their opponent up, and then toss them over, and then onto the floor. So I've always loved those. That's probably my favorite throw. There's a lot of different other throws that are my favorite. And grab, choke, run like this. I know one of my favorites. We step out, and then you throw over like this. Hold on, see right there. Right, and then we punch. Ah, yeah. Done. There you go. Then you have sweeps. Sweeps are some of my favorites. Where if you, if you had a if you had a uniform on, you'd be grabbing my uniform. I'd be grabbing his. And so what's called outer reef, which you come out, sweep, go down. Okay. Other side, same thing. You have many multiple different suits now. You can't get too crazy because when you're dealing with giant monster suits, it's not going to really work too well if you're going too intricate. We have also ones where, you know, I can't demonstrate with you right now, but what you do, it's called the, um, it's called the wheel, wheelbarrow. Where here, you come in, you put your foot, and you throw them right over the top of you. That's one of my favorite throws. But you can't really do that with a giant monster suit, okay? So, judo is a very big part and our, our tokusatsu related meeting because it's something really easy to do, especially along with wires and everything else. It's something that it just it, it flows perfectly into you, the, the uh, martial arts aspect. So you have you have your aspect behind the student, I think, which is basic stances, how you properly walk and move, because think about when they're moving in the suit, they can't just walk like this. This is just how Godzilla is going to look like. It doesn't look menacing. Take your time. You move in, circle step. In karate, we call it the circle step. You move, you lock your stance, you make sure that you're strong. 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 Here. So it, there's a lot behind it. It's, I had a huge, I remember I was just telling the lady uh, yesterday. I, when I first came to G-Fest, I really didn't know who Lou Nakajima was. I really didn't. And it was thanks to G-Fest that I realized there's so much more behind what I love when it comes to suit acting. So I realized that just like how I didn't know the man behind the suit, there's more to the suit than just putting it on and pretending to break stuff. If you, if you want to do it properly, you have to know how to properly get in there and act. And that includes knowing your body. You have to know your balance. You have to have coordination, proper coordination. So next week we talk about uh, we talk about martial arts in the um, we talk about martial arts in Japanese media. We also have striking, which is a lot more flashy, a lot more, you're going to be able to showcase a lot more. Let's talk about Power Rangers, uh, Godzilla Final Wars. I'm getting started on that one. <laughs> Godzilla Final Wars, um, Super Sentai Kamen Rider, a lot more striking, kicking, fighting people. So 
So I'm going to demonstrate a couple of techniques here. So in, uh, in training, we have a thing called sparring. Sparring is a live, it's a live demonstration. I'll throw this over here. Uh, it's a live demonstration of your techniques. You can learn how, to, uh, learn how to strike and hit all you want, but you need to be able to go up against a live opponent if you want to get any better. And so what we do is we utilize the There you go. All right. All right. So in yeah, striking, you need to have sparring. So in sparring, we, we practice our techniques against the live opponent if you want to get any better. So a couple different techniques we have. All right, so you have punching. Punching somebody with the basic bread and butter. You have it's called jab, cross. You punch over your lead hand, over your lead foot, and then you step down. It's called your cross, so you're going across your body. So you have a lead, cross, and we call it a hook punch because an obvious hooking motion. And so all these techniques can go to the body, the head, bang, or my favorite, which is right, bang, right there. But so we have lead, cross, hook, then a bit uppercut, which uppercut comes up and a little, almost like a shovel. You talk about a shovel uppercut. It's almost like you're putting your shovel in the ground and you're throwing it over your shoulder. If I just go like this with my arm, it's not going to be jacked. This is like the Mortal Kombat. We call this the Mortal Kombat. <laughs> want to make sure that we use the legs and then punch straight up and straight through. So it starts off simple. I can't tell you how many times I've done one, two, one, two, one, one, two. And as you build up, you go one, one, two, three, two, three, four, five. You can start building it up. It doesn't just have to be, you know, kind of that, that, that. You start building up, you start trying different things. One of your techniques is called a back fist, where you snap out and you're hitting either the side of the chin, right there, knock, knock, or if you're being really mean, this is talking about self defense, right to the temple, and if, you have, if you're not careful enough, you can actually kill somebody. So, there's all types of different places to hit. We have, these are the closed techniques. Closed meaning my, my fist is closed. I'm using my first two knuckles. Again, this is about if I said, how do you punch? I don't just go like this. You can see, you see in movies all the time, they're just they're throwing punches. But I actually throw punches. If I want to do a proper punch without hurting myself, I have to utilize the proper structure. If you look at my arm here, if I have my arm like this, or this, or this, does that look like proper structure of the punch? Because if I punch like this, it's going to go here, I've done it. It hurts. If I'm punching all the way here and I go like this, I'm going to hurt my hand while he stands there laughing. So this is what we're talking about, how much goes behind it. So even when the fight scenes or whatever you guys like to watch, they have to have proper technique if they want to do something and want to make it look believable. Because it's one thing to just to go through the motions, want to look believable. These are little things that really matter. So when every time a punch comes around, punch comes around, it's always those first two knuckles right there. Because you have structure. If I'm like this, my arm, my hand tilted up, there's nothing behind these. These are my weakest two knuckles right here. Down, I have this entire line of bone going all the way down, all the way up, and it's just like one spear. And when I punch, when I punch, it goes straight through, whole body. Not just my arm, but my entire body through it. Then we start getting more into uh, some of my favorite techniques, which are the more complicated ones, which are when you start you building up combinations, you utilize moving around, you're moving around your opponent, going around, uh, almost like a dance. Almost like a dance, you can't just stand like this and walk around, <coughs> marching band, it doesn't work. It's, I've done, people have done that and they, they lose the part. So we have a lot of other techniques that I love, which my, my father's favorite was the spinning back fist. So what you do is you'd be here, you throw his hand right in the person's face so they can't see it, I just turn around and spin, and then hit right right there. You used to fold the heavy bag with this, 150 pound heavy bag. You used to go up and then whack right there. So I've always been a kicker. I've always loved kicks. Kicks are my favorite. There's a lot of different kicks that you see in Power Ranger, Tommy uh, Rider, Godzilla Final Wars. Not really good ones in Godzilla Final Wars, but there's, there's kicks in there. So your basic, your most basic kick of any of any martial art is, at least in karate, it's called the Maigari front kick, which is when you bring your leg up, 
It chambers and it kicks out. It comes back in. Now, again, proper technique. If I want to hurt an animal or I want to actually do something to them, I, there's two ways of doing it. This is what uh, kickboxing we call a uh, push kick, which is where I literally push my opponent away from me. That's because if we're sparring and it's too close, I use that as a technique to get them away. What we call the front kick is where you use the ball of your foot. The ball of your foot comes up, kicks right there, and it comes back. I have many different targets. I can hit him right in the knee, right in the groinal region, right in the stomach, or my favorite, right in the chin. And that's a great knockout, just bang right back. So that is the most basic of kicks. It's basic, everyone uses it, everyone loves it. Second most basic is called a roundhouse kick. Roundhouse is because you're coming around. You have a straight line, straight line, you have linear movements, and then you have circular movements. So linear, of course, is straight, and then circular is around. So what happens is I open up, and I come through, and I do what's called a roundhouse kick. You have lead roundhouse kick, you have rear roundhouse kick, you have sliding up roundhouse kick, and just the possibility that I just love it. So we have different targets. In kickboxing, you're allowed to kick the thighs. So, <laughs> that's a great thing. Uh, you're allowed to kick the thighs. So in, in kickboxing bouts or in MMA bouts, when there's one, they, they come in and they kick the leg. They kick the leg because imagine a tree. The more you chop at it, the meat is gonna fall down. Same thing with your legs. If you wanna move, you wanna be mobile when you're fighting, you need your legs. So if you slowly start kicking someone over and over again, in the leg, eventually they're gonna get slower, they're gonna start limping, and they're gonna start <coughs> losing eventually. And so, when it comes to the roundhouse kick, there's a couple different targets you wanna use with your feet. You have the top of your foot, the instep of your foot, the lower shin, and the higher shin, all different things. Instep is more just a quick in and out. The lower shin is where you wanna dig that shin bone right into it, and then the higher shin is where you come in. I mean, really, uh, the, higher, the higher shin bone is that really you want to dig in. It all depends on how much you want to hurt somebody. But you have, the ins you have the outside of the thigh, you have the inside of the thigh, which is a lot more dangerous because there's risk of hitting someone right in the groin. But then you also have to the midsection, to the head, which is my favorite because I always like just going straight right to the head. Like I said, you have different footwork. It's not just have switch step, which is you're replacing your feet, and then your front foot becomes your back foot, kick. You have a rear kick, where you open, and your rear leg comes through, or you just have your lead, which you slide up, and then kick. And then, so another, another bread and butter technique, side kick. Side kick is always one of my favorites, one of my favorite kicks. This is utilizing, it's called Yoko Gary, Japanese, Yoko Gary, side, Gary meaning kick. So in, uh, in the side kick, the purpose is we want to make sure that we're chopping right through, going right through. What happens is people go like this, just like, you know, whatever, the legs, they don't know what they're hitting with. Because what people are supposed to hit with is the heel and this part of the foot. What happens is they'll use their whole foot, that's a good kick. No, it's not. If they that, it's fine. I move them back. I move them back. That's what's fine. No. You want to make sure how how important it is to maintain the proper technique. If you guys are watching, when I'm watching these movies, these TV shows, I can notice all that. I can see that something that they're just, you know, they're trying to, they're just kicking. They're not really utilizing the, the proper technique. I, I mean, as much as I enjoyed watching Final Wars, I could see how it just they didn't know what they were doing. They were just, they're, most of them were just actors that supposedly learned how to how to do martial arts for just for that movie role. But side kick is such a great technique. It comes up, chambers, and then kicks out, heel, bleeding. So imagine digging a heel right into the chest. So you got a couple different targets. You have kneecap, you have chest, or my favorite, which is face. And again, different footwork. I'm able to start here on my stance, the proper stance. If I stand like this, I can't kick. Then I just, it's not going to work. I have to adjust and then kick, which in fighting, if you 
give someone that little second, that little bit of time, you're going to get clobbered. Trust me, I've done that. So, in here, my stance is that I can slide up. This covers distance. If I'm this far away, I can't get there. I have to slide up, or I have to take a step, slide up, and then kick. I have what's called a shuffle, which is where I bring my front foot up, and I slide across. You have a pendulum step, which is where I replace my front foot with my back, and it's a little pendulum swing. And then my favorite, which is the, uh, does anyone see Hand of the Dragon? Here, anybody? Okay. The Bruce, the Bruce Lee sidekick, which is the step behind, and then drive all the way through. So back to one of those bread books I gave I absolutely love. Another uh, kick that I love, you might see, it's called the hook kick. Obviously for a hooking motion. So same thing, what it is, it's like a sloppy side kick. What do you mean by that? It means that some people will do this. They'll go, hook, go, this is a hooking kick. It's not. It's a sloppy side kick that drags through and then back. It's a great technique because my instructor has knocked out many people with it. I've used it to knock out, uh, I've used it to hit people with it. And it's a great technique. And so we have, again, the different targets in, uh, you have, uh, if his hands were up, the intended target when you're dealing with uh, fighting someone is obviously the vitals. If it's if it's an actual a predetermined fight, like it's a professional fight, or a uh, sparring match, you're not gonna hit people in the groin, you're not gonna hit people in the throat, eyes, all that good stuff. So you keep it to the body and the head. Usually just the front and the side. You don't need to not usually allow to hit the back of the head for obvious reasons. So in hook kick, I'm always a high kicker. Some people can't get their uh, their foot and their leg higher than this. I always go for the head, I come up, and I kick. You can drag the hip through, move, kick. But it's in a proper balance and chambering. I tell you right now, if I don't have this right here, then I don't have a kick. Because if I'm like this, that's not a good kick. I have to have here where I can just do a kick. I have two ways of doing it. If I want to hurt him, I use what? My heel. Because the heel is a lot stronger, it's more dense. Now, if he's just my sparring buddy or this is a, a tournament where I want to hurt him, what I'll do is I'll turn my foot down and tap him with my foot. So I'll come up and go. Just a little tap. Just a little kiss. Now, if I want to say, oh, I don't like it too much, and I want to get to the heel, all I have to do is just draw in, up, right there. Okay, uh, hook kick is my favorite kick, favorite technique, because it's got a beautiful, beautiful use of your hip. It gets in there and just, wow, dang. I just, I love the hook kick. Love it. Another one of my favorite technique is an axe kick. Axe kick comes up and straight down. I use this in sparring all the time. I'll we'll around and come up. Straight down. Hence why it's called the dance. Straight down. The intended target is a collarbone, or does he have the flexibility right to the head? So my favorite thing to do is I'm in here like this, and I'll go up, and then straight across the face, if I can, right there. And again, this is part of proper technique, if I just go like this.
Now, in uh, karate, we have an awesome little kick called a Yoshiro Gary, which is back kick, or you would call a mule kick, which is if my back is turned, it comes up and kicks up and under. Now, again, I'm a high kicker, so I have the intended target is here. Okay, if it's self defense, we're right there. Or if it's me and we're sparring, I'm going to go up. And see, this is really this is a very powerful kick because it doesn't utilize so much as a you know hmm, chamber. Ah, yeah, there we go. It's simple as you're utilizing this pendulum here to swing, a natural swing that pretty much anybody can do. It comes up and in, up and in. I love this. It's one of my favorite because the best part is you're gonna this one. Put your hands like this, and you're trying to fight. One hand back here. So with sparring, obviously unless you want to get hit, you have your hands up. Your hands up. One thing that I love to do, and why this is great about the back kick, is that this is his defense. Right here. His hands are his defense. That's what blocks. Where do I fill the gap? What I mean is that if I want to hit him and hurt him, what do I do? Do I try to go through this, or do I try to find a entrance way in a different direction? So if his hands are like this, I'm not going to go try to kick, kick his hand. Instead, I find a good old entrance say, okay, right up and in. It's extremely difficult to try to turn your body inward and block a kick that's coming straight up and into your chin. Where if I'm like this, I try to kick him like this, he's just going to be like, whatever. I easily can just right up to the chin. I've done that before. Now, moving on my next, oh, my next, these are these are my, my favorite kicks. We have spinning kicks. You have regular kicks, which is just straight. All that is stationary. We call it spinning. Spinning is great because you add even more power and velocity to it. And that's a really fun to do. So, two, two basic spinning kicks that we utilize is that spinning back kick, which is where I turn, 